Okay, in this uh, version of Blender, when we talked about the all the the different screens, uh, the the relationship of the data and scenes, let's talk about layers. Um, layering um, permits you to to compartmentalize data um, within the same scene, and so um, you can take this data and move it to another layer it will disappear but if I go down here and select do shift select I can get both data in the same view and the purposes of the layering is so that you can control the complexity of your scene you could have one part of the layer be just your your um, your items in your view this one could be for your animations your character animation this might be your for your lighting this one could probably be for um, uh, environmental stuff and you know each one of these could be just different different um, um, different mesh data or different just data um, separation of the set of the content within the scene and uh, the lock mechanism is supposed to allow you to lock uh, layering and if you turn it off and you go to a different layer and everything turns off you want to see what your lock layer is it'll show you so it's kind of like a preset and what the lock layer also means is that's the stuff that's going to get rendered in the final scene this, if I click on this layer, this is not going to get rendered. And if I do a control zero on my camera, and let's uh, go back to the lock layer, and I move my camera up and rotate it. How I'm, how I'm rotating is, is by hitting R for rotation, and I hit middle mouse click to change the one. Uh, orients the camera around one axis and then the other uh, orients the camera around two other axes and so um, this is this will give me a perspective on my mesh and if I unlock this and I go in here and I start working with that stuff um, you'll notice there's no camera there but if I let's put in a light Add a light because we won't be able to see anything. I add in a light, and if I hit um, F12, let's go down here to disk view because usually it throws up a window separate from this Blender window to put the render view in. If you click disk view, it will force the render to occur within the same panel. So let's hit, um, we hit F12, and there it is. It got rendered, and notice that we're we're on a layer without the camera but what it really did was it rendered the lock the lock layer um, and there's fancy tricks that you can do with layering I can go to a light go to light buttons and tell it to only light things within the layer that it's currently in which would be this layer and then I could duplicate this object, duplicate the lamp, then move this into another layer, to that layer, whoops, no, this layer, and move that into that layer. And then I hit the lock and we see everything. And um, these are owning the same material the lights are not um, the lights are not if I select that is the both lights are the same they only work with the layer but they probably don't work with the same layer um, but they share the same movement data and stuff like that but we want to go back to that so they're separate layers for these lights and I'm going to color one light um, 
whoops that's not one that's not coloring colorings over here I'm gonna color one light red and then I'm gonna color the other light um, green and if I go back to this light it's red this one's green the surface white that surface is white these are sharing the same material data which is what that two is saying these are not sharing anything and uh, they're in separate layers they're only going to light the layer that they're in and if I lock and because I've locked this um, these are two things are going to be rendered let's make sure the camera is looking at both um, let me do that hit rotation middle mouse click and then it, it lets me orient that and I can orient that and then I do F12 and they these are both white surfaces but they're being lit by separate lights now if I go and I duplicate a mesh right here and then I put I can put this in both layers. I can, I can uh, hit, uh, uh, I think it's M, and then I shift select it. It'll be in both layers, and this one will appear. Th this is red, this is green. The two together that will create yellow. And if I do an F12, there we go. And the reason why it's yellow is because red and green together um, produce yellow in light um, in lighting things um, in you probably know that from art whenever you work with paper and you mix red and green together it produces brown um, and that is kind of brown but that's really yellow and uh, that's the difference is is that when you're working with light or working with RGB to mix color when there's no RGB it's black whenever it's all RGB when the red green blue is combined it produces white and um, but in on paper everything's the negative because the light hits the surface of the paper and the the colors that are on the paper absorb um, the 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 light that that reflects off the paper is what got reflected by the colors on the paper and the um, it's subtractive. I'll just say it's subtractive on the paper when it's emitting light. It is additive. And so, working with um, working with data, I mean, working with uh, print media, you're going to be working with the negation of of the light. So, red, green, and blue becomes on on paper the primaries become the negation of red, which is. Um, the combination of green and blue which becomes cyan and working in this uh, it would be this is green so on paper that would be the negation of green which would be um, red and blue that would become magenta or purple and the, the yellow the negation of yellow is um, yellow is usually red and green so the negation is blue and so um, uh, but that doesn't mean anything uh, we're talking about primary so um, if this is blue the negation of blue would be red and green so it'd be yellow and that's the reason why whenever you look at a printer it works not in red green blue it works in cyan magenta and yellow is because it's it works with it's subtractive it subtracts light it doesn't add it and that's the difference that's the reason why when you print stuff up from uh, a graphic from a computer what you see with light um, there has to go through a color transformation 
in order to print the same stuff on a printer. And that's the reason why your photos never really end up with the correct colors when you print up. So anyhow, that aside, I showed you layers and how you could adjust the data. You, you could separate the things between the layers. And uh, so the, to select a layer is to use the left click on the layer and uh, you got to do it in 3D buttons for that. Another place where you'll find a layer is if you go here, which is an edit buttons, there will be layers there. And I think maybe there might be in the materials buttons, maybe. No, there's not. It's just in the mesh data um, editing screen. And, um, and when you hit M, that lets you select for that object which layer it's in. And we want to, if I render now, since the lock layers are just um, that one layer, it's not going to show the other data. If I do it for just this layer, it's still going to show, even though the camera is not in this layer, um, it will still show the, I think that's true. Yeah, the camera is not in the layer. It will still render out even though that's you know and then we bring them back together and in the lock layer and hit render they get combined if i unlock the layer and go someplace else to some other layer where there's nothing on if i hit f12 it still shows me the same stuff because it only renders that layer what's locked okay and this down here is really just a different way of hitting M. So if I go to this guy, see each of these things are in different layers. So that's just a different way of being able to use the M key. And so there you go. That's layering. And we'll talk about something different on the next next tutorial.